So the quintessential ingredient in tonic is chinchona bark. This is a red chinchona bark. Um, that's where that characteristic bitterness is, is, is generally going to come from, from the alkaloids in here, particularly quinine. Uh, and that's also the origin uh, of tonic as we know it was the quinine being used uh, for its anti-malarial properties and anti-pyretic properties. Modern tonics are often just an extract, uh, just a, a pure quinine or a salt of quinine with citric acid, sugar water, uh, and carbonated, and maybe some additional flavorings. Uh, but there is an upper limit on the amount of uh, uh, chinchona alkaloids that can be in a beverage in the United States that's 83 parts per million uh, so you have to be careful how much you use because uh, you don't want to you don't want to breach that limit and get in trouble next up we have black Omani limes Lumi these are um, uh, basically there's there's small limes that have been boiled in a salt brine and then sun dried so these give a lot of the the, the more uh, earthy, musty notes that are in, in, in the tonic combined with some citrus notes. They, they sort of accentuate the earthy, musty notes. Uh, got a really nice uh, citrusy smell to them. Uh, sourcing these is a bit of a pain in the ass uh, to get a reliable source uh, that is good quality. Uh, they should have a nice oily sheen on them uh, and, and smell nice and there shouldn't be any, they, they, should, they should smell citrusy and there shouldn't be any, uh, any powder coming, coming off of them. Uh, this is an example of one that was in a recent shipment that I wasn't happy with, that I couldn't use. Um, and this, I believe, was uh, kiln dried instead of sun dried. You can probably see that it's coming off on my fingers. Right there. And that's not like an oily sheen, it's a, it's a powdery sheen. It, it's very fragile. It breaks very easily with my finger. And it just doesn't have the same the same bright aromatics as the uh, as the ones that I'm, that I'm using that I'm currently using. So those I I, have, I was not able to use. The the other nice thing about these uh, the these Lumi is that they they really accentuate the uh, the smokiness of the Lapsang Suchan, which we're going to talk about in uh, in a minute. Uh, also have a very good good portion of uh, of rose petals in the in the tonic. This mainly is providing a, a floral top note in, in the beverage. Bergamot is another really important flavor, specifically the peel in the tonic. Um, the best bergamot comes from Calabria in southern Italy, and it is a very difficult product to get a really high quality Calabrian bergamot in the United States because there is some grown in, bergamot grown in the United States mainly in California and Florida, but it is not good quality and it really, from a, from a sensory perspective to me, bears very little resemblance to, uh, to the high quality stuff from Calabria. And so this, this came here in a suitcase. Uh, but it, it's wor worth the effort because it, it really is a, a really beautiful smell. It's giving citrusy notes, um, but it's also floral, in its, own, in its own kind of way, uh, very aromatic, a little spicy. Most people would be most familiar with bergamot uh, because it's one of the characteristic ingredients of Earl Grey tea. Uh, another, uh, another ingredient that came here in a suitcase is the vanilla. So these probably don't look like the vanilla pods most of you are used to seeing. This is Mexican vanilla from, uh, from Yucatan. Um, this is, that's, that's where vanilla is indigenous to is Mexico. Uh, it's, a, it's got a different aroma to it a little bit than, uh, than the bourbon vanilla that would come from, say, Madagascar. Uh, this tends to be not quite as sweet. It's a little spicier, a little mustier. Uh, really, really nice aroma. Uh, also, uh, a difficult, uh, difficult botanical to source rely uh, reliably in the U.S. So I get that. Uh, I get that. I have to go to Mexico to get that. Um, Lapsang Suchan is a smoked black tea. It's coming from China. Uh, this is this is one of the notes that people pick up on the quickest uh, in the tonic is is the is the smoky note, 
and, and I really like that. It, it gives it gives a, a it, it aids with the savoriness uh, of the tonic and gives it gives it a nice staying power or contributes to the staying power of the tonic. Part of why it lingers on the palate and can stand up to uh, to so many other things, but it, it, it's not overpowering either. It, 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 it ties everything together nicely. It's not a it's not a, it's not an overpowering smoke. Uh, sumac berry. This gives a nice, uh, bright, sharp uh, acidity, uh, but at the same time, it gives a nice berry note, almost like a uh, an unripe raspberry with with a hint of uh, I guess raspberry leaves as well. Uh, white sage is uh, is another botanical that's in there that, that 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 I think is important. There's quite a lot of white sage in here, and. This gives. This is where most of the herbal notes are coming from in the tonic, uh, as as well as contributing a lot to the the savoriness. Uh, white sage uh, is a really good botanical if you're trying to to get a savory note, particularly when used in conjunction with certain other flavors like uh, like sumac and uh, and lapsang suchan and, and the lumi. Uh, also, the white sage is very important for the microbial stability of the of the tonic. Uh, the white sage has both antifungal and antibacterial properties, and, and that's that's one of the examples that really contributes a lot to the microbial stability of this product. Uh, also in that category would be the this, the different citruses in, in here, the different citrus peels, the uh, the lumi, the the bergamot peel, and then the lemon and the grapefruit peel. Uh, the roasted chicory here. This, most people will know it from being in New Orleans style coffee or as a substitute, and it does give a nice roasted note to the, to the beverage, um, similar to a, to a coffee note, but not quite as, quite as harsh, it's a little sweeter. Uh, it also contributes body from the inulin, that is the carbohydrate store in, uh, in chicory root. Uh, and additionally, this is the main source of, uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the foaming in the in the tonic, uh, chicory root is pretty high in uh, saponins, stepaglycoside, that uh, contributes to the foaming and also helps to integrate the uh, uh, the non-water soluble compounds from these botanicals into this beverage that no longer has al that, that that doesn't have alcohol in it, um, which would normally be what's holding uh, holding that together. So this is a very very important ingredient in the. Uh, in the tonic, particularly for its uh, its physical characteristics, its its foaming and uh, the the way the uh, it, it holds together the the non water soluble compounds. The cinnamon. This is you might notice probably looks a little different from the cinnamon sticks uh, a lot of you are used to seeing, particularly in America. Um, often, what gets sold as cinnamon is actually cassia. This is Ceylon cinnamon, true cinnamon, or sweet cinnamon, uh, and this is from uh, from Sri Lanka, and that that's really where most of the best uh, most of the best cinnamon comes from. This is not not quite as sharp of a of a cinnamon flavor as cassia is. It's sweeter um, and sweet cinnamon uh, definitely has that cinnamony spice, uh, but it doesn't uh, doesn't bash it over the head. It integrates better into uh, into the beverage than than cassia would. Uh, and additionally, cinnamon does have some good antimicrobial properties as well, so that's contributing to the uh, to the stability of the beverage. I mentioned the, the lemon peel. The these are peeled uh, by hand by me. Not a not a fun part of uh, of doing this, but it's important that you don't get uh, get pith in there because the pith is going to contribute some unpleasant bitter to, bitter notes. So you want only the outermost layer of the uh, of the peel, and that's that's where the uh, most of the essential oils are contained, and, but without the, the bitterness contributed by by the pit. Um, same thing with the uh, with the grapefruit peel, uh, peeled peeled by hand, and to uh, to avoid getting the the, the pit and the, the unwanted off flavors that that would cause. Next up, we have hibiscus flower. The hibiscus flower is uh, well. One of the things it does is it's great for contributing color to a beverage. You can get really, really beautiful red tones, amber tones, ruby, pink, depending on what you use it with and 
uh, and how much you use. Additionally, hibiscus gives a really nice acidity. It's a little different than the, it's not quite, uh, quite as sharp as the, as the sumac. Uh, it also gives some, some floral notes, as you might expect from, from a flower. So it contributes both flavor, uh, both, both flavor and, uh, and color to the, uh, to the beverage. Similarly, rose hips are good for color, uh, and these are giving some, some nice uh, berry notes and, uh, uh, and sort of shoring up uh, and reinforcing some of the notes contributed by both the rose uh, and, and, and the sumac, those, those uh, floral and berry notes. Lemongrass is giving a little more uh, of a uh, herbal lemony note to it. Um, and also contributing to the uh, uh, particularly antifungal compounds, citral uh, and aldehyde in uh, in lemongrass is also contributing to the uh, to the microbial stability of the of the product. Fresh ginger, it's giving a nice little spicy note in there. Uh, the ginger note is not that strong in the uh, in the tonic. But it is there. If the ginger didn't go into the product, uh, it would taste quite different. Uh, but it's not supposed to be dominant. It's a it's a supporting note, giving uh, giving just a little bit of a little bit of spice to the um, to the product. And the last botanical is gentian root. Gentian root is most commonly known to everybody just because it has a very intense bitterness to it. It um, it's a, it's a great bittering agent. It's used in a lot of bit. It's used in a lot of bitters. It's used in a lot of amari. But uh, it's not just a bittering agent. Uh, along with that bitterness, if you've got good gentian root, you also get like a nice woody, musty sweetness to it, uh, and that's definitely getting contributed here. So it's reinforcing the bitterness of the product um, because can't we can't use too much of the uh, of the chinchona bark. For fear, so that we're not pushing up against that uh, that limit of uh, of 83 parts per million of of chinchona uh, alkaloids, and so getting a lot of the nice uh, bitterness from the from the from the gentian root, and also gives some tannins, as does the uh, does the chinchona bark and the, the tea. Now the lemon juice is really, really important, and without this, the product actually doesn't taste good. Uh, it needs that acidity to balance out the bitterness that's in there, and and also this is very important. It brings down the pH quite a bit of the product, which is important for microbial stability. Um, that's one of the reasons citric acid is added to so many foods and beverages, including uh, tonic. You need you need something to bring that acidity uh, level up, bring that pH down. But uh, lemon juice, citric acid is also a good, uh, a good antioxidant. It's a, it's a, it's a chelating agent. And, but that's not the only uh, antioxidant in, in here. Uh, it's also very high in ascorbic acid, vitamin C, which is another good, good antioxidant. Uh, and so that, that really helps a lot to, uh, along with some of these other botanicals that also have antioxidant properties, to uh, give oxidative stability to the, uh, to the product, which is why it, it doesn't spoil even if, even after you've opened it. And last but certainly not least is the uh, the raw agave nectar. This is the only sweetener in there, and um, this gives a lot of uh, a lot of body, a lot more than you would get just from refined sugar, and also contributes a little bit of flavor. Uh, it's also it's also got a lower glycemic index. Not all the carbohydrates in there are digestible because it's a raw agave nectar. Um, the inulin, the carbohydrate store, uh, just kind of similar to starch, uh, hasn't been fully hydrolyzed to, uh, to down to uh, uh, the the fructose that it's made of, and so it's 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 it gives a lot of viscosity, uh, gives some sweetness and flavor, but not an intense sweetness, um, without contributing uh, too much sugar, and that. That's what you have. That's the uh, that's the beverage. And I was talking too long, so I lost the uh, I lost the head on my beard. No, my tonic.